and welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. Today we're talking about the main challenges for Ukraine's foreign policy in the last five years. So what were the main successes and what is still needed to be done in this sphere? What is Ukraine's progress on the path of European and Euro-Atlantic integration? And is there any way to mobilize Kyiv's efforts on the international arena to achieve the reintegration of Crimea and Donbass? To talk more about this, we're joined in the studio today by Olena Halushka. She is the head of International Relations and Corruption Action Center. Hello and thank you for joining us. Hello, thank you very much for inviting. So first of all, let's evaluate uh, the efforts and the results Ukraine achieved throughout the five years that we've been on the Euro integration path. Um, frankly speaking, I'm optimistic because indeed Ukraine is moving in the right direction. And I think that one of the biggest priority of Ukrainian foreign affairs is basically implementation, proper implementation of the Ukrainian reforms. Because Ukrainian international partners mentioned uh, that the real democratic transformation of Ukraine is the top priority for them. Because all of the assistance which Ukrainian international partners provided to Ukraine over the last five years, it was linked to, to different reforms deliverables. For example, the Visa Liberalization Action Plan with the European Union, or the Association Agreement with the mm -hmm. European Union, or the loans which were provided by the International Monetary Fund, or World Bank Assistance Program, etc., etc. All these programs were linked to, uh, to, to the specific steps, commitments Ukraine took to um, implement the reforms. Some of them were implemented properly, some not. But generally, I think that Ukraine is moving in the right uh, direction. Which of the reforms would you call the main success for Ukraine? Um, I think that uh, since I'm working in the anti-corruption NGO, I'm concentrating on the fight against corruption. And I must tell you that this fear is probably simultaneously a very big success as well as the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. Because if we talk about what is achieved in terms of fighting against corruption, that's a lot. Ukraine um, uh, established a, li uh, a chain of new anti-corruption institutions for fighting against high-profile corruption, like National Anti-Corruption Bureau or High Anti-Corruption Court, mm -hmm. where the international partners were not only supporting establishment of these institutions, but were directly taking part uh, in the, for example, selections of the judges of the anti-corruption court. Also, Ukraine achieved tremendous success with regards to opening up the information of public significance, uh, as well as transparency, mm -hmm. such as, for example, the launching of the electronic declaration system of for all of the public officials of their assets and incomes. However, these reforms are not finished and the international partners do understand this. So I assume that for the next five years, the international partners will keep prioritizing the anti-corruption reform for their further assistance and will also keep an eye on how Ukraine implements this. Let's focus a little bit more on the anti-corruption sphere since this is your field of action. Um, how bad was corruption in Ukraine before the reforms started being implemented? Which level of the corruption, which level of corruption is Ukraine experiencing right now? Um, it was the situation with corruption before the revolution of dignity was very bad. And basically when the former president Yanukovych fled Ukraine and the activists and the society got to see his luxurious residence, Majihirya, um, with all this, you know, golden bread uh, pieces, uh, people were outraged. Uh, according to the SBU statistics, the, uh, around uh, $10 billion were laundered by the activities of the former president Yanukovych and his cronies. Oh, wow. That's a lot. That's even more than the uh, previous IMF program. And uh, um, it is very hard to say that um, how to assess the level of corruption. There is Corruption Perception Index, which is being uh, monitored by the Transparency International worldwide, mm -hmm. not only in Ukraine, but that's about how people are perceiving corruption. And with regards to corruption perception, there's a trick right now here. Because Ukraine has done a lot in terms of transparency, 
it, people might have the feeling that there is much more corruption today because corruption is much more reported and because mm -hmm. corruption is much more revealed today because investigative journalists are doing amazing job. National Anti-Corruption Bureau is catching uh, and detaining corrupt groups regularly, which is also reported in media. What about ha high anti-corruption court? Are there any cases in the court already, meaning high profile officials? Uh, basically not yet because it is not fully operational. So at this stage we are um, uh, 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 we, we are basically um, all of the judges of the anti-corruption court are selected um, they took the oath but the court will start considering cases in the beginning of September mm. meaning that it would also need a few more months to start considering uh, all these cases and around half a year afterwards uh, we expect them to uh, basically deliver first verdict in the high profile corruption cases before the so basically in the year 2020 we're going to hear the first jury decision we hope early 2020 okay and um, at this point um, all of the high profile corruption cases which were investigated by national anti-corruption bureau they were sent to the ordinary courts and unfortunately ordinary courts completely failed to deliver justice uh, in the high-profile corruption cases against mm -hmm. top officials. Mm -hmm. How do we um, how do we prevent from the situation with the high level of corruption um, from repeating itself? How do we educate people so they won't let their own country to sink into corruption once again? That's a very good question, uh, and that's, I think, uh, the lessons learned for the Ukrainian society after the Orange Revolution and after the Revolution of Dignity. Because after the Orange Revolution, Ukrainian society basically went from the streets home, knowing that, okay, we are having our new president, they will take care of the state. Um, while after the Revolution of Dignity, Ukrainian society realized that with the end of Euromaidan, the revolution basically moved from the streets to the governmental cabinets. Mm -hmm. And it's incredibly important that Ukrainian civil society, um, non-governmental organizations, as well as society in general, keep Ukrainian authorities accountable. And I think that here it is critically important to have the permanent cooperation with the international partners for, for, for having the so-called sandwich effect, which was also super helpful over the last five years to promote the reforms. Because international partners, they have different uh, instruments like the assistance programs or visa liberalization mm -hmm. action plan, which I already mentioned, which they link and condition on specific reforms deliverables. Well, civil society who are here on the fields, who are monitoring the, uh, the, the activity of the different public institutions, including the parliament, they know very well how the parliament operates and they could very easily um, find whether there are some tricks in the implementation of the reforms or everything is done genuinely. And I think that such a synergy, like a constant monitoring from the side of the civil society and the, the help and support from the international community, um, this synergy would help us to prevent uh, to, to, to sinking back to the mm -hmm. endemic corruption level. How do we move forward then <clears throat> now Ukraine is in the state of a hybrid war, at least the east of Ukraine is uh, in the state of a hybrid war with the country aggressor, with our neighbor, and that is Russia. <clears throat> and we have already experienced the annexation of the Crimean Peninsula and now we're partially, only partially in control of the Donbass uh, region. How do we take that back? Um, Basically, frankly speaking, we are not working on the uh, issues of the conflict and the war with Russia, so I'm not sure that I can... No, what I meant is properly. in the context, uh, if Ukraine pursues its path towards Euro integration and uh, Ukraine integrates more and more into the European society, then maybe the European community and the international community, for that matter, will consolidate even more and help Ukraine get Crimea back and liberate Donbass. What are the ways of doing that? Um, I think that uh, you're absolutely right that a Ukrainian um, Euro 
Atlantic path and euro integration is critically important for, on one hand, strengthening U Ukraine internally and building Ukrainian capacities in the defense and security sectors, which are critically important to the effective fight against Russian war and uh, Russian war on Donbas, as well as hybrid war, which is basically all over Ukraine, because it's also about the informational war. It's also about um, t trying to undermine Ukrainian institutions from the inside, etc., etc. What I think is critically important for Ukraine is to keep this international consolidation um, in the resistance of Russian aggression. Mm -hmm. And here I would say that it's critically important that the international community and specifically the European Union are keeping the sanctions against Russia, economic sanctions, political sanctions, to make sure that the aggressor, uh, the sanctions against aggressor would be lifted only after Russia fully implements all of the requirements of the international community, which is stop the war in Donbas and return Crimea back to Ukraine. Thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting. Always. That was Elena Halushka. She is the head of International Relations Anti-Corruption Action Center. Thank you so much for watching UATV. Stay tuned for more.